Hey, this is Mr. Lawler from Perry Fields High School. I'm going to be teaching you about respiration today, so check out the description below to see the questions that I've written to help you learn about this topic. There's also an extension task down there. You can actually do this practical at home, so do check out that extension, okay? Enjoy! Hey guys, time for a little science lesson. I'm going to show you what's been happening in the kitchen here. We've got some yeast. Okay, yeast is a single-celled organism. It's different from plants or animals. We've got some sugar here. We're going to make a mixture. Yeast, all it needs to live is sugar as its food source, and it likes a little bit of water. Otherwise, it'll be inactivated. So I'm just going to take a teaspoon of sugar. That's about a teaspoon. Sorry, that's the yeast. Teaspoon of yeast. It's inactive right now because it doesn't have any water. So I'll just chuck some water in there. Now that is not boiling water, that just it's just old water in the kettle. Then it needs a source of energy, so it needs some sugar. It doesn't actually need that much sugar. I'm just gonna put in less than I did of the yeast. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stir that up. What the yeast is going to be doing right now is called cellular respiration. So all the little dots you see there, those are not individual yeast cells. The yeast cells are even much, much smaller than that. They're microscopic. They're just like our cells, but they're not an animal, as I said. They're also not a plant. They're something completely different. So yeast is a living thing. As soon as it's in this water, it's going to start respiring through cellular respiration. Because it's in the air, it'll do what's called aerobic respiration. That's where it's using oxygen. Okay. And it will produce, as its byproduct of respiration, it'll produce carbon dioxide. That's going to give us some bubbles. Much like the bubbles that are already forming there, we're going to see lots and lots of carbon dioxide bubbles in that mixture. I'm going to give it a bit more water. Now it is possible for yeast to do respiration without oxygen. That's called anaerobic respiration. That is the process that we use if you want to make alcohol. So ethanol is produced as a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. It still produces a little bit of carbon dioxide, so that's where we get the bubbles and the fizz in beer. But it also makes ethanol, which is a chemical product. Okay, so I'm going to leave the yeast there for a second and show you how we use this. Mrs. Lawler has been busy. She did this a little while ago. And you can see that's just bread dough. Okay? So see how it's getting puffy like that? Oh, that's nasty. Look at that. It's gross. Okay, all that puffiness, that's what they say on Bake Off. That's proving the bread. Well, proving the bread isn't a thing. It's actually the yeast are doing their job. They're just respiring aerobically here in the air, just here, respiring away, and it's making this bread flour more bubbly. It's using some of the sugar in the flour, and it's respiring, doing its job. Okay, come back over here to the yeast, and you'll see even more bubbly. I'll post a picture in 10 minutes time to show you what's happened to this over time. Okay, thanks for watching. 